All right, now it's time to add page sections to this page and also to style them. So we need to create content for the page before making each section. Let's come up with some standard architecture for each section. So <clears throat> if we do decide to put them in section tags, inside of that, it's a good idea to put a div inside just for the possibility of needing flexible visual styling. The div won't have any semantic meaning at all, but it will have some flexible visual styling. Okay, um, And then inside of that div, we need to have a header that has h1, h2, and then also its corresponding article. The next thing is I want to show you how we can create some uh, generic content for the section. And then we can basically create it and then paste it in six different sections. Okay, so let's examine it real quickly. First of all, there's a comment at the very top where it says section uh, in gray. And then next it has uh, the section with an ID. And, and in my example, it just says ID here. And then also it says class equals page content. Now the reason that I want to have this class is that I want to differentiate this section or all of these sections from the page header. So because page header is in a section tag, and it also has a header with H1s. So we want to make sure that that's differentiated from the rest of it. And then, of course, you see your nested div. And then what that's going to allow us to do, just as a heads up, is if you decide that you want each one of your sections to maybe have a different background color or image or something like that, then you're probably going to need to have that header and article wrapped inside of an internal div. And the reason is the div could actually be the thing that could be smaller and the section uh, each ID could have its own special color or its own special background where the section goes 100% and the div maybe is the thing that contains it at maybe 80% or something like that and stays centered. Okay. All right, so um, by creating the generic section, like in the previous slide, we can copy and paste it, like I said, so that we can end up with six sections after the page header. Um, and then we can go in and customize each one so that they would end up looking something like this. All right, and everything that's in blue is the, th the stuff that would be different and customized. All right, okay, so let's uh, actually go ahead and take a look at doing that. So we're back to our HTML, and I want to go down and find our section page header. This is the page header. We don't want to fool with that. But what we do want to do is replace this goofy little red section. And don't forget, we're going to have to go back and take that red styling with the white text away. But this is the section that I actually want to replace. I'm going to paste. And now we have something that's our generic, our generic code. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead so I don't forget, and I'm going to find a rule right here that has the background red and so forth. I'm just going to basically delete that. I'm going to leave this empty section in case I want to use it later, but I'm going to save this, my CSS, and I'm going to save my index. And now I can preview the page. You'll see if I scroll here, what I've got is I have section name and then I've got my content. All right? Well, that's good. All right? So far, so good. Now what we talked about before in the slides is basically taking this and going through um, and uh, duplicating it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we want to make six of these. So I'm going to do that and I'm not going to make you watch me. Okay, so I just created all six. So we have starting at line 31 all the way down to, what is it, line uh, 113. And a lot of that is taking up room because of these paragraphs uh, right now that have the lorem ipsum. But um, so I'm going to go up here to my first one. And like the slide said, let's go ahead and customize uh, each one. And if you wanted to look at a, an example here, let's close a lot of these basically. Let's just close all of these other files until we get to the one that was our original example. And it's this one right here. So if you go and look at these different options, it's also in your navigation list. We want profile, skills, education, experience, portfolio, and contact. You might want something different or additional, but these are the six that I'd like for you to at least at a minimum provide. So let's start with uh, profile. And 
I'm going to call it personal profile. Even though in the navigation it's referred to as just profile, I'm going to call this in, uh, in the actual heading level one, personal profile. And where it says H1, I can put some catchy little tagline that's like, I don't know, who I am or something like that. And in mine, I'm doing it as lowercase. You do whatever you want. Um, and then you can leave the the uh, paragraph here, that's fine. The other thing too is up where it says section, we want to say profile section, and then where it says ID, we're looking to add the word profile, because profile is actually, this is important, okay, you can't just call it anything. It has to be what matches your navigational href up here. So profile, skills, education, and so forth. And remember, you don't actually put the pound whenever you're putting the ID down here. You don't actually put the pound symbol. You're just going to put the actual word that's after the pound up in this navigational area. And where it says class, we're going to leave that alone because we want all of them to have the same class so that if we want to style that class, it can cascade through all of these different sections. And then when we want to target specific sections, we can target the ID name. Okay, again, I'm not going to make you watch me do this, but I want to go through and I'm going to customize all of these. And okay, so I have customized them now. And we have personal profile section. We have our skills section. Um, and I just, and I, the other thing I want you to notice is that I didn't use paragraph in all of them. I want to see what it looks like to have some different kinds of things in there so I can plan for styling them. So I put an unordered list in here with some list items. And um, for education, I want to show you something what I did for education. You might not be terribly familiar with this. I think we've talked about it in maybe the very beginning exercise of the semester. But um, if you look at this, this is a definition list. And a definition list might be a good choice for doing something uh, like for your education, where um, you basically start it off by declaring DL, which is the definition list. And then you can have what's called a definition term that you start with. And then you have definition data. So essentially, you're kind of defining the term with the data. And that actually makes sense with something like where you went to school or you know where you studied or something like that. So for the DT, we have, and at least in my case, I put the name of the school. This is all fictitious, by the way. Um, and uh, But yours shouldn't be. And the definition data is saying, you know, what what it is that you received. And with the comma separation at the end, you can put uh, the dates, uh, the dates that were attended. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that would be an example of using a definition list for your education. And note that DT is uh, nested inside of DL and DD is nested inside of its parent DL, but only after DT. So it goes DL for the parent and then in the correct order nested inside is DT and then DD. All right, so then we have the experience section and of course we've got our header and then we have our article just like the other ones. And what I have here is something a little bit different. I don't have it exactly like I had my um, uh, education. Of course you can play around with this and do it however you want. Uh, I chose to put my years first as an H3 because um, it just really kind of depends on what your employment history is. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, people want to see dates as something that's an important heading or that's called aside, and then uh, whatever you did during that period of time underneath it, so or next to it. So however you want to do this is fine. This is the way that I've got my example set up. So under uh, H3 2011 through present, I have a definition list. Um, and I want you to notice something that you can put more than one uh, definition in a list. Like you can have, I mean, that's the whole point of it being a list, right? So I've got a definition list. So that in this example, what I'm saying is that during the time of 2011 through the present, I was this mythical graphic designer, that's my DT, at such and such design studio. And then the DD for that is 
something that can contain a paragraph. That's important to know. The DD is allowed to have paragraphs, lists, it can have other block level elements inside of it, but the DT cannot. All right, that's an important thing to know. And you can't like apply classes or IDs or anything to the DLs, or excuse me, the D, yeah, DTs. Um, but also in that list, I have another DT that presumably I did this job between 2011 to the present, which freelance designer, San Diego, California. And then I've got my definition data. Again, this is just one example of how to do it. You've got your ending definition list. And then you'll notice for a different separate set of years, we have another H3 that's 2010 through 2011. And then it's got another definition list. All right, and I'll show you what this looks like in a second. Um, and then if you come down, we have a portfolio section. And again, same as the others, we have our div, then we have our header with our H1 and 2 article. And then now I'm choosing to do something where I have an H3 with an unordered list underneath it. Right now it's not styled, so it looks really weird. But presumably you're going to have potentially other things, like different types of things in your portfolio if you want to uh, organize it that way. Like you could have one that's like for web, another that's, uh, you know, maybe graphic design. So you could have these different heading levels with different little mini galleries. So this unordered list right now just has some placeholder images. You'll see that I've got it like that. So each list item has uh, an anchor tag with an image inside of it. Um, so that the image would be the thumbnail and then the href for the anchor is going to take me to the larger version. Later we're going to put JavaScript on this to make it a dynamic gallery, but for right now it's just basic and simple. And then lastly we have our contact section at the bottom. Okay, in the article, I'm going to skip over the header. You can see that I've customized it though. In the article I just have like a paragraph that has my email address. Um, and then I have an unordered list of all my different little social media options. Right now I just have uh, uh, just a pound symbol in the href. I don't have it going anywhere, but you would need to fill them in. And, you know, you need to put only the ones that you are active with. You don't want to put stuff that you don't keep up to date. Also, make sure that you keep this professional. If you're doing social media stuff that is really highly personal, you don't want potential employers to go and look at your Facebook or whatever. I probably don't have to tell you guys that. But anyhow, um, that's the last part of it. And so if we save that and uh, then go ahead and preview, here's what we have so far. It looks really ugly, but but it's a good start. We've got the content in, and now we can like choose to go and figure out how we want to style this stuff so that ultimately it ends up looking sort of like like this. Okay, so back to our CSS. What I'm going to do is scroll down to the bottom of my CSS where I have uh, my section rules and then I've got my page header rules. Well, I want to scroll down and I want to start a new subsection for my page content rules. All right, so these rules are going to apply to all sections who have a class assigned to them called page content. And if you'll remember, that's what we did here whenever we were making our generic, you know, copy and paste version. So all of these, except for the very top one that opens with the full viewport, um, they're all called page content for the class. Now, I'm just going to start with this. We still have to do more styling, but I just want to start by saying, all right, that the div... All right, the div inside of the page content section can start off by being 85%. Um, and we'll give it a max width of 1024 so that it doesn't get too wide. And the reason that I want to do that is because if it gets too wide, then you're end up, you'll end up having really long line lengths. We're going to choose to preview it. And let's see what that did so far. Okay, ah, well, I didn't do the margins, okay? So the margins are pretty important. Let's go fix that. Let's say margin. And so for top and bottom, well, one thing about this is that they're really jammed right up on top of each other. So let's give it a pretty decent, hefty, like 3M top and bottom margin so that they'll get away from each other. And then I would say uh, to make it auto for left and right so that it'll center itself. And if I come back here and hit refresh, then now it's centered automatically, it looks better.